I remember sitting on my couch just smoking a joint, because I wrote, if you can't tell, all the meat and stuff is written on pot, but smoking a joint thinking, what's the most fucked up, offensive thing I could possibly write? And then my crippled children suck, and that's it. That'll get their attention. That'll sell a few platters. So yeah, that's where I was coming from. I wanted to do punk, but I didn't want to, I wanted to be funny. Because to me, the great, some of the greatest stuff that I grew up with was like the Fugs and just stuff that made you laugh. Frank Zappa, I mean, fucking genius. I mean, just, this, that's the kind of where I was coming from. And I wasn't the only one to do that. There's some other ones, but had to be funny or at least attempted to be funny. Tongue in cheek, irreverent, abrasive, obnoxious. That's what punk rock is. It's supposed to be. You wouldn't know it from going to a punk show nowadays. Of all that n no effects, namby pamby shit. <laughs> That's just again my own personal opinion. So tell me about veganism. <laughs> veganism? Layton, get in here. I'm like, he's the first and only member of the Meat Men that does not eat meat. <laughs> Which is pretty cool, actually. It's almost like, you know. Like the blonde guy in Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> or the black guy in Fear. <laughs> I just remember thinking, here's Lee, the biggest fucking, you know, your dad as far as race relations goes, and he's got a black dude, like a jazz bass player, too. He's like, Whatever. Yeah, um, I did do, write a song, Vegetarian on a Stick, on the Hate Police record. I don't know if you've heard that one or not. But, yeah. I mean, to each his own. Doctor did my 50 year old hose up the butt and said, You got a colon of an 80 year old man. I'm like, Oh, I guess that's for meeting lots of bad stuff. The doctor tells you that it's not a good thing, but these guys live with my colon every day. <laughs> my wife Gerda is doing the merch at the show tonight. She's like, You gotta buy one of those charcoal cushions. <laughs> you got to. Let the cab driver sit on me. She's a saint. She's been married to me for like almost 30 years. And can, can you imagine? Anyway, she's a good woman. She deserves some kind of award. Actually, I just gave her an award this afternoon when you guys left the motel room. <laughs> I still got the lubricant in my pocket to prove it. Sorry, I'm not making you girls blush over here. Oh, my, you want to hear about my first date? This is like... Speaking of Gerda and my butt, it was New Year's Eve, and, we, and I, I, um, it was, I was living in this little old house, and I had put satin sheets on the bed, and you know we went out to a party, and somebody had a, a buffet line, and so we were going to take her back, and it might not have been our actual first date, but it was the first real date, so I was going to take her back and seal the deal, and. Uh, I woke up like two, three in the morning and just with this horrible feeling. And I was just, I was sitting in a huge puddle of my own feces <laughs> <laughs> on this brand new set and sheets with this girl that I was madly in love with laying next to me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit, literally. I remember going in the bathroom and looking and turning around and it was just like a, you know, Rio Grande in the back of my pants. So I tapped her on the shoulders, honey, could you sleep on the couch? I just shat the bed. <laughs> and she still married my ass. Well, that's a good woman. Anyway, sorry, that's kind of gross. <laughs> you would expect nothing but that from me, right? Any other questions? So I can end on a less poopy topic. Like I said, just, oh, go ahead. How long were you in DC? 17 years. Yeah, from 82 to 99, and it was just like, kind of time to get go. People from Michigan are weird, they leave Michigan, but they always come back. I had my parents were there, and it was just like, we were done with all the traffic, and I kind of got an inkling the Republicans might be on the way. The Bill Clinton years were over, and things were going to start to suck. So I split, and never looked back. I love Michigan, I know Michigan gets a bad rap in the press, but it's a great place to live. It's a great place to find really cool band members, such as these these Klondikes I got with me now. 
this new lineup, if you, if you want to see, see some, uh, I don't know, what do you call the meat, man? Hybrid, punk, metal, flamenco, comedy genre, that's what I call it. These guys are in another band called Chapstick, if I may plug them unceremoniously, that really brings it. So we have, we have, to, we have CDs. So check it out. And this band against the grain is a bunch of young kids from Detroit that are real good too are gonna to be on the on the bill, so Yep, it's gonna be fun. What's the show scheduled tonight? I think uh it's only three bands, which is you know, a local opener. One local opener, then against the grain, then us. So yeah. Mercifully there's not like a six band bill. So that gets a bit tiresome. We got 25 shows in 25 days and like 15 of these book events, but I'm like, this is a great dual purpose. I can plug the book, I can play some punk rock. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So, it's all good. Any other questions? Where are you excited to go to now? Where am I excited to go to? Home? Yeah, Seattle is, is pretty cool. I'm playing with Zeke, which is pretty cool, oh, yeah. yeah. So at that Corazon on Saturday night? Yeah, that's going to be a good one. So I'm a big fan of Zeke. And there's Suzuki Obsession that I share with them. And so yeah, and um, TKO Records in Long Beach, uh, California, or Fountain Valley is putting out a limited edition second 7-inch, uh, the Happy Fucking Easter Asshole EP. Um, the first product with these new guys on it. So three songs, one original and two germs covers. So we're going to have a, have a party at TKO on the 15th? I think so. So yeah, that's exciting and I'm not, I don't know, after one show I'm shot. Listen to this, fuck with these pipes. But somehow, I will soldier on and get it done. Why did have yes. How did your parents feel about what you were doing? You know, that's a very good question. <laughs> My parents have gotten little glimpses of me over the years, but they really don't know. <laughs> Mama, Mama's gone now. She was 91, bless her heart. She died in September, but they really don't know. It's kind of weird that a, a man in his 50s hides it from his parents. But, you know, look at, look at it. They're like right-wing, Christian reformed, like Dutch people, and they would be absolutely mortified if they knew the extent of their little boy, little boy. Anyway, yeah, my mom, um, coincidentally, was the one that made me the wordsmith I am today, though. She sat with me through, all the way through school. Re, we, re, I wrote a paper, she would help me. Re, she never had a day of college, but she knew the English language better than anyone ever. And she, I can thank her for launching my literary career, so. <laughs> even though she doesn't know it. But yeah, good question. I don't have hip parents. That, I mean, I love them to death, but yeah. They would not understand. Not like Ian McKay, whose mother died, and they, uh, this is, I, this is going to be on the internet. I better not say 